The European Commission is funding a three-year project now called Explaining Religion. It started last September, will run three years. Two million euros have been invested by the European Union, and it involves scholars from 14 universities, among them psychologists, biologists, and anthropologists. The focus of this is to search for the biological reasons why human beings believe in God or gods, and in religion in general. And this is the largest ever scientific study of the subject, as far as anyone knows. So, let's start with Dr. Bill Phillips. Now, the, the European study, uh, one of the things that popped into my mind, uh, perhaps uh, somewhat uh, mischievously, is would anybody think to do a similar study about why people believe in, uh, in science? Uh, because, after all, a lot of people have said that the very uh, doing of science requires a certain uh, acceptance on faith of ideas like the universe is reasonable and, and subject to study, not something that was always believed. Uh, and so I wonder whether, uh, now I, there's, it's, it's not like I'm saying science and religion are the same thing. Uh, on the other hand, I don't think that there is as much difference between the pursuit of science and religion or science and faith as people sometimes make it out to be. As a Methodist, we are taught that our faith is based on uh, four pillars, the so-called Methodist quadrilateral, which is scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. So to a scientist, that's textbooks, uh, lectures, um, uh, theory, and experiment. <laughs> And, okay, they're not identical, but there are similar aspects to the way in which we approach uh, science. We don't check everything that we know about science. We accept a lot of stuff on faith. Now, there's a difference. We can, in principle, do the experiment and check it out. But the fact of the matter is that if we had to do that for everything, we would never make any progress. So the way we do things on a day-to-day -day basis... May I ask a question there? We would never make any progress because you're agreeing with Karl Popper and other philosophers of science that absolute proof, absolute truth are not concepts that really belong to science, but no. rather failure to refute. Is that the reason? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I study uh, electromagnetism, let's say, and I read in a book all these experiments that were done, and I believe that they, in fact, did those experiments. I don't go and do them myself. Maybe sometimes I do, but in general, I don't do every experiment that I've heard about. Nevertheless, I believe that they were right. Now, there's a difference. I could, if I wanted to, do those experiments. So I'm not saying it's the same thing. I don't have to accept all those scientific things on faith. But I do. You're suggesting a pragmatic approach. Yeah. You do and you see what can come out of yeah. that. Yeah, and if I w insisted on checking every one of them, then I would never have time to learn something new. 